Hey guys, Ben Melikin here. Today we're going to talk a little bit about jerkbait fishing. You know, it's late fall, early winter here in the Midwest, and that means you do three things. You grow out that nasty beard, you switch from beer over to bourbon, and you break out the jerk baits. You know, I can't think of a better time of the year to throw these baits than when the water temperature gets down below 50 degrees, bass get a lot more lethargic, and they start really keying in on those slow moving, suspending baits. So I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about a new bait uh, that came out this last year that's become one of my go-to baits in my jerkbait box. And then I'm gonna tell you five keys that I think are gonna help make you a better jerkbait fisherman. This here's a Six Sense Lures Provoke 106X jerkbait. Uh, like I said, it came out uh, about last January, so I've had a full season now to use it. And I've been really blown away with the performance of this bait at the price point it's at. You know, right out of the box, you notice the great uh, colors that Six Sense Lures is known for. Uh, anything from a chrome pattern, uh, the opaque patterns that are great when the water is dirtier, uh, all the way to the translucent colors. There's several different colors there that are great. And of course, the really natural thread fin shad, gizzard shad, bluegill colors like that. Um, as you can see, it comes with three hooks. I love that. Um, an extra hook is great to have when they, you know, they're slapping at the bait. You can pick up an extra fish or two throughout the day comes with super high quality split rings and treble hooks so you don't have to swap anything out. But my favorite thing about the bait is the versatility of its action. You know, some jerk baits are great uh, when you hit them hard and they have that real wide erratic action back and forth. But when you pull them on a slow twitch, um, they more or less just move straight forward or just barely dart to the side and don't look that natural. And then there's the other category of jerk baits where you can hit them with little twitches like a Mega Bass 110 or something like that and they're really good at fluttering right in place and have that real slow, subtle action. But when you hit them really hard, they will blow out and roll over. Uh, this bait actually can do both. Um, you can hit it hard and has really nice, wide, aggressive action, uh, or you can just hit it with those real short twitches of the rod tip and it'll just kind of flutter in place side to side real slow. And that's great for drawing those bigger bites. Now, this one will dive down in the four to six foot range, and it comes with a weight transfer system, so you really can. You can bomb cast it. I, I feel like I can cast it further than any other half ounce jerk bait that I own. So I've been extremely happy with that aspect of it too. Now, when you want to get down a little bit deeper, also came out with the 106XDD, or excuse me, 106DD. And this bait will actually dive down into the 10 to 12 foot range comes with all the great characteristics of the 106X with the great paint colors, um, weight transfer, everything like that. Um, but something really unique about this bait, and it's probably my favorite bait in my jerk bait box to be honest, is even at that 10 to 12 foot range, it still has that great fluttering and super wide erratic action. You can really do the same um, versatility with the bait as the 106X. This bait um, is a lot better around bluff ends, um, channel swings, deep brush piles, stuff like that, or just when the fish are relating really tight to the bank and it's a, a steeper bank, this bait will get down into um, that depth range, five, six feet on the second or third pole. And so you're already down there um, in the strike zone for the majority of the cast, which is a great thing. You can check both these out at sixcentslures.com. So now that we've talked about the Six Sense Provoke line of jerk baits, which like I said, it's been a great bait for me. I cashed a few checks on it this spring when the water was cold. And now obviously, uh, like you saw at the start of the video, I've had a lot of success as the water's cooled down this fall. But now I'm gonna tell you what I think are the five most important things, since maybe misconceptions, um, to help you become a better jerk bait fisherman. Number one is to slow down. I know that's a common belief, but I think um, recently we've become too accustomed to watching Kevin Van Dam, uh, Aaron Martin, some of these other guys fishing jerk baits extremely quickly for active smallmouth on flats and breaks. Obviously those guys have had a ton of success, more than I've ever had, um, but we're talking about slow moving lethargic fish um, relating to, to really slow moving prey in cold water. So what I do is I start out generally about five seconds on the pause and I will go up from there until I let the fish um, tell me what they want. So I'll start at five seconds and I'll slow down, maybe go to seven or eight seconds. If I really feel like I'm in a good area, I'll go all the way up to 12 or 15 seconds. Anything more than that, I feel like it's overkill. And then once the fish start reacting um, to the bait, especially if it's in that five second pause range, 
I will speed it up to three or four second pauses, um, but nothing, nothing quicker than that generally. Number two, this is a vertical bait, and so you will have more success if you fish it vertically. Now what I mean by that is it works best uh, when you fish the most vertical structure and cover available on your lake. By, by vertical cover, I'm talking about channel swing banks, um, just deep sloping banks, uh, like greater than a 45 degree angle, uh, brush piles that are deeper where they can look up and act, they react to the bait like that. The difference between a horizontal and a vertical bait to me, a horizontal bait is like a regular crank bait, a swim jig, buzz bait, uh, something like that, where it's moving on more of a horizontal axis plane. And so those baits are obviously excellent when you're on a long tapering point, um, a big grass flat, a weed edge, stump flat, stuff like that. This bait excels when you can work it on the most vertical cover when a bass can look up and have it over the top of its head. And so to maximize the number of bites I get in a day, I will always fish it around the most vertical cover available in the lake. Number three, match your bait color to the conditions you're faced with. I think a lot of guys get too hung up uh, with matching the exact size or color of the forage available in the lake. And that's something I tend to disagree on a little bit. I will always throw the same uh, profile and depth baits on different fisheries, no matter what the forage base is, whether it's bluegill, crappie, shad, crawfish, uh, anything like that. So I'll run you through real quick uh, what I do with my color selection. So if it's sunny and the water's really clean, I'm always 100% of the time going to start with a translucent bait. I think the fish are super keen um, to sight, they can see the bait great, and you wanna be as natural as possible. Now, if it's sunny and the water's got a stain to it or you consider it muddy, I will throw a chrome bait. Uh, something that's chrome will throw a ton of flash in the sun. It can really draw the fish in in that muddier stained water. If the water's clear and it's cloudy outside, I will throw the most natural colored uh, opaque bait that's not translucent and I feel like they can really see those colors well, whether it's a natural bluegill, natural threadfin shad color, something like that. In your last situation, if the water's muddy and you've got cloudy conditions, I will always throw, I'll start with like a bone or a chartreuse color. Uh, and even if it gets super dark, maybe a darker like a deadly black color or something like that. Number four, always twitch the slack in your line. I think that's something else guys can do when they get moving the bait too quickly is when you're twitching the line when it's stiff, your bait has much more of a tendency to sort of glide forward before you start twitching it or moving it forward instead of when you twitch the line on the slack, it's immediately the first reaction is that, that quick sharp pull and so as soon as that line tightens on the twitch, it's going to dart and flutter, shoot to the side, um, just like if you throw slack in a walk the dog style bait, same style deal. And I think that's a lot more natural presentation for the fish. Number five, this might be the most important behind slowing down, and that's boat positioning. Something I don't think gets touched on enough is your boat positioning uh, when fishing a jerk bait as it relates to what cover or structure you're fishing. Again, this is a vertical bait that you're moving extremely slow with long pauses. And so what that means is you can't go down a bank and you're not just burning it like a, like a shallow crankbait or a chatterbait or even a frog or something like that. You have to line yourself up as perfect as you can uh, with the cover you're fishing and really visualize what that bait's doing and where that strike zone is. My biggest thing on that is fishing into the wind whenever possible. So like if you're fishing a, a man-made jetty or a point or something like that, position your boat into the wind and so you can sit in one spot throughout that entire cast. When you start moving uh, the boat forward, as you bring in the retrieve, you get a big bow in your line and that bait, as soon as you go to twitch it, it will start to turn before it twitches. And obviously a bait fish isn't gonna go on a perfectly round horizontal plane. It's just another advantage for the fish to let them know that's not a natural bait. So those are my five tips that I think will help you become a better jerkbait fisherman. Um, let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to touch on. Thanks a ton for watching the video and I hope you enjoyed.